we're going to go ahead and jump into seven players who could be cut and or traded before the regular season and before the NFL trade line. Let's begin. This is LeGarrette Blunt here, man, three-time Super Bowl champion. I just want to give you a shout-out to the YouTube channel, Micro Mike, man. Hey, Eddie Murray, former Detroit Lion. Make sure you watch Micro Mike on YouTube. Calvin Johnson Jr. here, uh, a.k.a. Megatron. Big shout-out to Micro Mike and YouTube channel, man. Just keep on talking to everything Detroit Lions, and I just got to remind you, man, happy wife, happy life. What is going on, YouTube, and welcome to Detroit Lions Talk with Mike or Mike. We talk all things Detroit Lions, news, rumors, analysis, breakdown, and everything regarding our franchise. And in this video, I'm going to give you seven players who could be cut and or traded before the regular season and NFL trade deadline. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm dropping news and rumors every single day. Let's get to 200 likes in this video. The more likes we get, the more chance that my smile gets better. So let's hit that like button. Without further ado, let's begin with the first player. None other than wide receiver Geronimo Allison. Now, when we look at his stats last year, you're going to notice it's zeros across the board because he opted out of the season. And with the Lions trying to get younger when it comes to the wide receiver position, a lot of players like Sage Surratt coming in as undrafted rookie, a player like Geronimo Allison could be a cut candidate to not make the 53-man roster. With his inability really to stay as a top flight wide receiver throughout his career and the concept that he didn't literally play last year, for him to make the roster, it's going to be fairly difficult. You got the likes of Tyrell Williams, Brashard Perryman, Quintez Cephas, and Amon Ross St. Brown. You're telling me that they're going to put Geronimo Allison in front of a potential better wide receiver as a higher ceiling? That seems a little bit unlikely to me. For him to make the roster, he needs to make an immediate impact when it comes to the NFL training camp. He has to show that he has more ability than just being a veteran presence. He's got to make some plays because we do have some holes at wide receiver. It's definitely not the best position for this team, but this team is in a rebuild slash retool mode, and we know the four guys that we listed before are going to make the team, in my opinion, and you got other younger wide receivers who could potentially make an impact and has a much higher ceiling than Geronimo Allison. Like that video, folks. Let's get this video to 200 likes in this video. The more likes we get, the more chance that the video gets out. And again, hey, we're trying to go against Legacy Media. They spit nothing but garbage. So let's get this video out so at least something else in a different perspective can be sent out to the people out there in the YouTube world. Let's go ahead and talk about Austin Bryant, the defensive lineman. This guy has been on this team for a couple years now, but the issue for him is his inability to stay healthy. And with the flux of getting better on the defensive line, we drafted obviously everybody and traded for Michael Brockers. It's going to be difficult for somebody who can't stay healthy to make this squad. Austin Bryant does have good abilities to get after the quarterback, but he can't show it because he's never healthy. Can he stay healthy? Now, last year, he's shown promises of finally getting healthy and making some sort of noise on the defensive line. But that is just a couple of games, and throughout his NFL career so far, he just has not shown a long-term solution for that edge. And if it can't work out, you might as well just go ahead and release him. Now, this, in my opinion, is a possible player that really could not make the team and not make the initial 53. We're going to go ahead and jump to the veteran here, Nick Williams. Now, you may be shaking your head. And Nick Williams, well, if you look at the NFL draft, when you get Levi Anwuzarike and Ali McNeil, that definitely is a big whoa to one of the defensive tackles here, and that would be Nick Williams. Now, he took a pay downgrade to stay with the team and they're letting folks go left and right when it comes to the last regime's pickups and Nick Williams we thought that he potentially could have been let go before really the offseason kicked off but he took a pay cut and stayed with the team but for him to make this team he's got to do more than just be a veteran just like Geronimo Allison he's got to make noise in camp because he didn't show a whole lot last year when he was with the Detroit Lions. 
Now, they do and they are very young when it comes to the defensive line, so they could use an older guy to help groom them. With that said, with the likes of Deshaun Hand, John Penasini, there's just so many defensive tackles that you can have on this team, and he would be a candidate I would watch to see if the Lions could head cut his services before he starts the regular season. Speaking of Deshaun Hand, go ahead and look at him as an individual that potentially could not make the team. It's going to be a fight between some of these defensive tackles, obviously Nick Williams and Deshaun Hand. Deshaun Hand, I believe, has a much higher ceiling than Nick Williams. The issue for him is injuries. It seems like to be a lot of these on this list. Can Deshaun Hand get over the injuries and really show out his potential? We all hope so because we've seen that in his rookie season, he can get some work done. And I think when you have a Levi on Wuzurike, Lee McNeil, a John Penasini, you can have a very young defensive front interior and a little bit of edge there and that would be nice for when you're trying to rebuild this team if he can just stay healthy that would be a mega boost to the defensive line with that said ever since he's had his injury it's just been downhill for his production and his knack to really do his job so he is definitely on the roster bubble as a potential player to be cut let's get to 14,000 subscribers, 60% of my audience is not subscribed to the channel. I think if with your help, we can get to 14K, and that's a fairly big difference than what we are right now. Smash that subscribe button, let's get to 14K. This guy is always going to be on my list, and that's safety Will Harris. They didn't bring in Dean Marlowe, and they could potentially bring in more. Will Harris has not shown a lot at all at the safety position. He's not shown that he can hold it down. When Quandre Diggs was sent away, he was thrown in that spot, and it definitely was a major hole, and he looked confused. He may have a chance now, though, with Aaron Glenn to hopefully resurrect his career, but in my opinion, that looks to be low. With, his, with him being one of the worst safeties in the NFL, it is hard for me to think that he is not on the roster bubble. Now, with the lack of players in the safety position, that could keep him on there. And obviously, he's not much when it comes to the cap situation. With that said, he has definitely got crosshairs on him. Because the safety position is one of the weakest on this team. It's one of the weakest in the NFL due to him. So if we can get production more out of a Dean Marlowe or somebody else if they bring in... Will Harris could be on the chopping block. Now let's go ahead and talk about some players that could be traded. How about Jelani Tavai here, the linebacker? He has definitely regressed last year. He's shown okay in his rookie season. I wouldn't say greatness, but last year, boy, oh boy, he was looking slow, confused, and out of it. Now, he definitely lost some weight of 17 pounds. He looks to be fast per Aaron Glenn. But that doesn't mean a whole lot because that could be just coach speak here. With the Lions completely turning over this linebacking core, and they got a lot of work to do in the next couple of years, Jelani Tavai is one of the weakest pieces so far on this core. If they can trade him for any sort of asset, if they wanted to move on from him, that would be nice. Maybe get a seventh round pick or a sixth round pick. Maybe another team like the New England Patriots would like to take him on hoping that he could have a high ceiling if that doesn't occur and he doesn't press in camp he could definitely be a cut candidate as well just because he is an absolute net negative last year at least on the field and if he doesn't prove significantly there's no reason to keep him on the roster now when it comes to trade rumors of Tyrell Crosby has been flying around as of late as he could be a potential player who could be traded away now, I do think that there is some fire and legitimacy to this, obviously because we got Panay Sewell. With that said, it's definitely a risk when you're trying to trade a player who could play left and right. But I don't see him being a cut candidate at all. This is straight up trade candidate. What could you fetch for him? Maybe a fifth round draft pick and or a starter, a player for the Lions on defense or someone that can contribute immediately. I would continue to watch the situation here because this is really important, even though he's a backup to the foundation of the Lions in 2021, because if we all know about injuries and if there's an injury, we really need to have a decent backup that can solidify that spot for a game or two. What could happen with Tyrell Crosby? I think this is one of the bigger 
situations taking place in Detroit Lions offseason as of right now. Will they keep him? And if they do trade him, I would expect potentially at the trade deadline. With that said, I still think it would not be a good idea, but he is definitely on the rumor mill when it comes to trades. All in all, I think when it comes to these players, a lot of these guys just got to really make some noise in training camp, not show what they did last year or the last couple of years. You need to really improve because this new regime is not stuck with you. They generally don't care where you got drafted before they came here. And that's important because you need to have the best 53, not the best drafted spot players for this football team. But in the upcoming videos, I got the One Pride podcast on my channel at 6.30 p.m. EST. Make sure there it is an absolute fun show. We got the mailbag segment where you got questions. We got answers. So come on down and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. And I'm dropping videos nearly every single day so you don't want to miss out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel.